Show Me Record the Podcast. Welcome to TV, guys. I'm Matt. I'm Brian. And I'm Paul. Quiet! <laughs> there is no talking in this dojo. <laughs> we are talking about Cobra Kai. We have, again, we're continuing. I, I have not announced this the last two weeks. And so we had in our mind, we're like, let's do special guest month of June. And then every intro, I completely forget to be like, hey, we're in special guest month. Well, guess what? I didn't forget this time. We're in special <laughs> guest month. We've got a good buddy of ours, Brian's brother-in-law, my my former sensei when <laughs> I did youth leading. <laughs> he was a youth pastor. That's Paul Rizdal. Paul, how is it going? It's going well. You know, I actually, I don't feel like I'm a guest here because you guys pretty much talk about me about every other episode. <laughs> So I feel like I'm more mentioned than than uh, the office on this this particular podcast. That's possibly. There's been weeks when I go into it and say, "Okay, I'm not going to mention Paul this time," and then Matt mentions Paul. <laughs> what can I say? We love you. We're enamored. It, it happens. It happens. But it's also because you give us the most feedback. Because I mean, we get some feedback. I get some texts from uh, from Mike. I don't I think Andrew messages with Matt a little bit. But then like, it seems like every episode, or at least every other episode. We get into a, a text chain with the three of us talking about the topic. That's true. This is true. You know, I, I don't listen to, I, I can honestly say I haven't listened to every um, episode because there's a few of them uh, that I, <laughs> I don't particularly have any interest in. So <laughs> I, I have skipped over a few, uh, but I will say this, listening to this, this podcast with you guys has made me realize how much TV I actually watch. And it's, it's a little bit embarrassing mm. um, because I know way too many of the shows that you're talking about to actually feel proud about that. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I, I think the main difference between like me and I, I, at least I know for Brian, is I give up on shows a lot easier than you guys do. Yeah. Like I, I'll watch, I'll watch a show and, and the moment I start getting bored with it, I'm done. So I, I don't have that stick to itness to to watch it through to the end. See if I if but then if I keep thinking if I did that I would not be watching Parks and Rec. Yeah, I would have missed Agents of Shield was my big one. Agents of Shield the first season was partial slog to get through, and then they tied it into Captain America Winter Soldier, and it's like oh wait Hydra's in Shield, and it got so much more better, more better, more interesting <laughs> after that. <laughs> I think the only shows I've really given up on are Heroes and Jane the Virgin. Ooh, mm. Heroes. Yeah, I might go back at some point because I do like those characters, but I keep, I, as well as what I keep saying, I might go back for like the last 10 years. So who knows if I ever will, but I'm not really. Well, bad. I mean, I've quit watching most of the shows that you've talked about, like uh, Community, Parks and Rec, Lost. I didn't see any of those through to, to the conclusion. So, oh man. Some of those are better than <laughs> others at the end, I, I'll say. I, I don't I don't know what you're doing on this podcast <laughs> then. You you're a quitter. Come on. We're talking about Cobra Kai. There's no quitters in Cobra Kai. They, they uh, quit, I haven't quit yet. They quit each other's dojos all the time in that show. What are you talking about? Yeah, but about? you know, an I, <laughs> idyllic sense, there's no quitting. Yeah. Just like there's constantly striking second, even though that's yeah. not their phrase. <laughs> All right, so Paul, what is just so we can get kind of get a uh, feedback from your like TV watching? What would you say are some of your top shows, two or three that you love? Well, like most of America, I love The Office. I just finished a, a rewatch of the entire series, so that's that's not something I will do a lot. Um, I, I rarely watch shows twice, but that show kind of checks all the boxes. I've been into Better Call Saul lately, uh, and there's a few other shows. I, I, I like the idea of being able to binge watch through a Netflix show, so that's that's kind of a, a new criteria for me. I, I, I don't really like waiting week to week. And then I watch kids shows because I have three girls, and, and so I watch the dumb stuff they like too. So Except for you do it when they're not around. <laughs> Fair like... enough. Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> Do they need another recommendation? Because I recommended to Paul's oldest, uh, Kayla, I recommended her to watching uh, Lizzie McGuire. And I guess she loved it. She's watched Lizzie McGuire. She's watched Even Stevens. Ooh, good, um, good taste. A, a few different Disney ones that you recommended. Oh, sorry, yeah, I sent so. her a list. Yeah. <laughs> well done. I, yeah. 
and if they're on, I tend to sit down and, and watch them too. But well, let's talk about Cobra Kai because this, like, this was the show that for sure we needed to talk about. We could have picked other topics, but we're like, no, we t- us three talk about Cobra Kai so much, and I think. If I if I recall correctly in our timeline, I was saying something to both of you about watching it, and then that got you to watch it, Paul, and then us two both enjoying it got Brian to watch it. Was that correct? Uh, I had I had started watching it um, at previous to okay. to you guys talking about it, but um, I, I certainly was just just beginning the process and just getting into. It. I was only a couple episodes in, mm-hmm. but I was kind of hooked right away. In fact. Um, I used it kind of as my motivation for my um, running training. So we have a, a treadmill downstairs and um, a TV in front of it. And so I kind of made a deal with myself. I'm only going to watch this show while I'm running. And so I, I really worked hard this winter on the treadmill <laughs> because I was like, I, I just want to watch another episode. So there's, you know, there's a 45, 50 minute run. And it, it just kind of was an extra, extra motivation for me. That's hilarious. Yeah. I watched like half a season in one night when I first started watching. He, I made a deal with myself too. I said I would only watch it at midnight eating Doritos. <laughs> and to his word, he has done only that. Brian, we're all proud of you. Paul's accomplishment is nothing compared to that. Yep. I exactly. burned all the calories you consumed. There you go. Watching that, Cobra Kai. That's what I want. <laughs> it, it was great. I, you know, I was when I first started watching. I, I shared um, with the buddy on my other podcast, Terrence, about the show. I'm like, you need to watch this. He's like, one thing I hate, and I'll, I'll agree with him. Is like, I don't like it if a show adapts as canon, like this meta, like, oh, actually, the main character was a bad guy, and so like you know, in the How I Met Your Mother, the talking about it where Ralph Macchio was the bad guy of Karate Kid, that was kind of the route they went with the joke. And so when this comes out, you know, it easily could have been like, well, actually, let's put Ralph Macchio as the bad guy. So when I first started watching it, I wasn't sure exactly what we would get. But thankfully, they didn't really put him as the bad guy. It was just like, they helped it be better characters fleshed out because it felt realistic of like these characters had issues and some of those issues carried over into being adults but that doesn't mean that they're specifically villains they can accidentally antagonize each other with just their character just who they are but neither one like you can see both sides of johnny lawrence and danielson um about how Mm -hmm. how they exist and i really liked that aspect of the show yeah, I agree. Like, I, I still haven't seen any of the Karate Kid movies. I, I think I've seen maybe a few bits and pieces here and there. But I, I'm interested to go back because I'm guessing I've seen movies from the 80s. I'm guessing that there's not a whole lot of character development from Johnny back then. I'm guessing it's more he's just the bully. And I think it's, it's interesting, that dynamic to, like, take the bully. And we start out with him. and He's, like, at a low point. Like, his life is just in the crapper. And to see how he uses the dojo and and his relationship with Miguel to really start to find himself and and through a lot of bad decisions start to not be the villain and how like I don't think Daniel's a villain but I think he's so set on this view of Johnny that he is his one track mind that Johnny has to be the villain so I have to be the good one in opposition to him yeah he's definitely a flawed character on this show which which I really like and and yeah I I think 100% 100% from the original movie. I mean, Johnny's character is just your classic villain, like no personality, uh, really nothing to him. So yeah, it was really neat to see kind of that perspective right off right off the bat from the show. Yeah, and it makes sense because he was a teen in that movie. So it's like, obviously all of us have been teenagers. We all <laughs> look back at ourselves as teenagers and like, I did what? What did I think was cool back then? And mm-hmm. so it makes sense. And like, they even hit on that as the story goes on. They're like It's like, yeah, we were just kids back then. Like they it completely acknowledge that they were not in the right with, some, like Johnny wasn't in the right with some of the stuff he did, but it made sense internally from his point of view and getting to see his point of view felt very natural and it didn't feel forced. And I think that's one of the aspects of the writing of this show that makes it be successful is it's not a, it, like it starts with a gimmick, but the gimmick isn't forced. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I love how, how Johnny, I, even though, you know, he's grown a lot personally, um, how he's still kind of stuck in the eighties and uh, how even like, like the computer, like he brings, the computer back to the pawn shop he's like oh this, this thing's 
not working right. It, it won't start up anymore. Well, did you plug it in? You said it was wireless. You know? so, <laughs> or or I, I don't have I don't have Facebook. I threw my phone away. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Or, or when he's updating his Facebook profile and he's taking all the pictures. And, I mean, it's basically all the girl poses and he has this massive photo dump of, of cheesy pictures. I mean, they're just the cultural references are just hilarious. Mm-hmm. And it's really funny to see how rough around the edges he is, but he's still endearing. Like the very first line from Johnny is when he meets Miguel. The first thing we hear him say is, is uh, great, more immigrants. Like that's not something that you can <laughs> say in 2021 and people will be endeared to your character, but somehow they bring it around. Especially in the first season, I kept thinking, like, are we supposed to root for Johnny? Cause like he does something really nice and heartfelt and then he just like, beat someone up or pees on a cop car or something and it's like oh wait is he is he the villain are we it, it's it's nice that it goes back and forth it's not as as simple as like oh the white hat the black hat villain good guy kind of thing yeah the the great part of johnny's character is how endearing he is like he, you get to see his intentions and his intentions are so pure and are so honest and he's just trying his best but like you said he's stuck in the 80s and that's and that's again great writing to be able to like bring the feel of the '80s into modern culture and to even have things to say about modern culture where it's like you know they they're constantly towing that line of like mocking kind of that woke progressive culture but at the same time like not doing it in a way that's offensive but I think that one of the things that even I, I was I rewatched this epi- uh, this series over the last week. And one thing I noticed in the third season is how Cobra Kai like plays off of that sort of culture to get away with some of their stuff. Like how um, Hawk, you know, when he's appealing to the counselor is like, they're invading my safe space. And I didn't mm-hmm. feel like that sort of thing. And like it endeared him to the counselor. So the counselor took their side or like in the city council meeting where they're like, please bring back all Valley, whatever. Um, Crease is like talking there. And then uh, Daniel jumps in. He's like councilwoman or council per uh, councilman, so-and-so and it's a woman. And then Crease corrects him. Like actually it's council person. <laughs> and it really actually shows how, um, like there needs to be substance instead of like the stuff that makes you feel better. Like, Oh, the, the right titles are okay. Like there needs to be substance behind your actions because you can say all the like PC stuff and all the right things. But at the end of the day, like you can still be a crappy individual if you're only talking the talk and not walking the walk. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that, that we've kind of discussed in our conversation is, and, and maybe I think Matt, you brought this up the unbelievability of these kids just kind of knocking the snot out of each other. And like, there's no parental, you know, interference there. There's, there's really very little being done by the school administration. I mean, does that, does that discredit the show or is it just, you know, we're fine with it because it's, we're suspending reality for this moment. I think it's a little of both. Cause, I mean, we get a little about of that with mainly with um, what's what's Daniel's wife's name? Oh, I, I just watched an episode. Is it was Amanda or is that, the, is that the actress's name? I think Amanda's, Amanda's right. the character. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> Amanda LaRusso is like the only person who does that. And sometimes a little bit Miguel's mom, like when he gets really hurt. Uh, she, but they don't really do much. I mean, she goes and confronts uh, Crease at one point, but she's just always like, oh, you guys and your dojos. And it's like, no, they're basically killing each other. And like, no one's like, like when Dimitri gets his arm broken, we never see his parents. And he just is, is still going to school and, and still going to Miyagi Do. Like, I don't know. I feel like there should be a little bit more of, of parent involvement beyond the point when they had the whole school brawl. But at the same point, like, I don't necessarily want a lot of screen time to be devoted to that. So, yeah. It's, that's a hard line to walk. If you're my wife, she'd say, absolutely. They, they're they going too big, too crazy. That's one of her complaints. Like we, we both love the show and we're both ready for season four. Mm-hmm. Um, but she, you know, for her, that's still something that takes her out of it. For me, I just try and reason it away of like, well, this has an 80s feel. And in the 80s, things were this real dramatic in the entertainment that we watched. Like you you can't watch a Patrick Swayze movie from the 80s and be like, yeah, that's realistic, you mm-hmm. know? So it's that carries over into this show. Yeah. And as far as the kids, I think the, I think a lot of times 
it would have been easy to just focus on Daniel and Johnny and Crease, but I love how fleshed out the kids get. And uh, I think my personal favorite dynamic is between Dimitri and Hawk. I love scenes mm-hmm. when they're together because you see how, you know, Hawk goes from what's his name, e- Eli, to being Lip to being Hawk, and how he just like falls head first and just becomes a completely different person to the point where like Dimitri was his like best friend his whole life, but he doesn't give a crap and breaks his arm and, and all this kind of stuff. And it t- takes until the very end of season three when he finally like switches sides and just seeing that progression of like how much like hurt and like anger and pent up let loose in the wrong way with the wrong mentors can just turn you into a crappy person. Whereas Dimitri was like always, I mean, he kind of, egged him on a little more than he needed to at times but kind of kept his identity through learning how to stand up for himself yeah i mean that's one thing about this show is they're constantly messing with your mind as far as like who are the good guys and who are the bad guys and i I mean i think most of the characters the kids in particular have at one point kind of been the villain and and at one point have kind of been the good guy with uh I forget the the bully um the Kyler? from the very beginning oh, I forgot his name Kyler the Asian guy Kyler the Kyler guy. yeah yep. uh and he's pretty much been evil the whole time uh but he's probably more like the original Johnny Lawrence but I mean most of the characters have have kind of gone through this this evolution of uh being good or being bad at one time even like like Tori was a a very sympathetic character for most of the show and now she's kind of, you know, in a villainous role. And I mean, Miguel has kind of flipped back and forth. And and even Johnny's son is kind of walking that way. But I guess the thing that's interesting is you see the how the environment in, affects how, you know, ultimately their character is is developed. I never sympathize with Tori. <laughs> all, the, all the other ones, like, I'll agree with. But Tori, I never really sympathize. And maybe it was because she was such a foil to Sam. Because it's really, when they brought in Tori, it was to be the exact opposite of Sam. But to take Sam's place as Miguel's girlfriend, as, um, what, what else? There's another thing, too. Like, just kind of like she was put in where, oh, a- Aisha's friend. Yeah, so yeah. to be Aisha's friend and to be dating Miguel, that was Sam's spot in season one. And so then all of a sudden this person comes in who doesn't deserve to have Aisha as a friend, who doesn't deserve to have, like, just by the way that she acts and some of the, and the choices that she makes. And so I'd never felt like we were supposed to be like, yay, Tori, <laughs> you know, she, from the get go, she had issues for sure. But I think, I think you like, you get where she's coming from too. I mean, like the, the whole conflict with Tori starts when, when she's dating Miguel and, and uh, she sees Sam and Miguel kissing. And then um, there's also like the scene at her apartment complex where the, where the, um, you know, guys trying to assault her and and crease steps in and, and defends her. So you, I mean, you kind of understand where this chip on her shoulder is coming from. Yeah. Yeah. And you see in that moment, like, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a good thing that, that crease stops this guy from taking advantage of her but you know he's not doing it out of the goodness of his heart he's doing it because she's she can be another warrior for cobra kai yeah and i like i actually <laughs> like crease's character development too um because even though he doesn't really have an arc where it's like he's changing you at least see like you kind of change in your perception of him so you see his past in season two you see in season two, you see like, oh, he actually has been lying about this and he's a homeless pretty much. And um, then in season three, you see pits of his past. And so you get to understand, even though you don't specifically still agree with him at all, you get to see where he is coming from. And I I liked what they did there because for a mm-hmm. moment in season two, you're like, oh, maybe he did change. And you, you feel the same thing Johnny does. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, maybe they're going to go a different way, even though in the back of your head, you're probably thinking like, no, they need a bad guy for this show. You, they've got to bring him back to, yeah. to being <laughs> awful. And Paul, you mentioned um, Johnny's son, Robbie. And I think and Robbie's another interesting character because he's – you can see that he has been left to fend for himself for so long with Johnny being absent in his life and his mom, like really not caring for him at all that I think he has this mentality of like, he's so quick to write someone off like, Oh, yep. I already knew you were going to leave me. And so like, he's now like burned bridges with his dad with, and with the LaRussos. And he's basically with, uh, with crease out of only one left. So it's interesting to see if he ends up, 
coming around or like I, what what ends up going on with Robbie because he was starting to become a, like a, a good guy when he was living with the LaRussos. And then all of a sudden, you know, I forget, you know, he, he oh, that's right. He kicked Miguel off the, off the railing and almost, <laughs> what, was, yeah. what was it? That? Just, just that little incident. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that set him off to like, just abandon and like steal a car and, and try to disappear off the face of the earth. It's like his, his natural reaction is to, to flee. I, I really want to bring up a character just for a moment because he's like my favorite character and he's a side character, but Stingray from season two, um, Paul yes. Walter Hauser, this guy, like he's a tremendous actor. He's popped up in uh, Richard Jewell and recently in Cruella. He was in uh, I, Tanya, if you ever saw that movie and he kills it in everything he's been in. He's quickly becoming like one of my favorite comedic actors. Um, I just loved what he brought to this role. It's the same thing that he brings to his other comedic roles. And I just was like, I want more of him. I want to see more of this guy. And unfortunately, I think he became too big of a name for season three that he had other stuff he was doing. And that's probably why he wasn't back. Yeah. So um, just just out of curiosity here, I like I have kind of a few things maybe about the show that I wish they would have kind of done without. And, and probably the biggest one for me was Daniel's trip to Japan. I was going to see that yeah. season three I, is not bad, but it's definitely the weakest. I thought that was such, uh, I, I mean, they just, I, I feel like they just wanted to use some of those clips from the second and third movie or w- whichever. I didn't remember which one it is, second movie, I think. Uh, and it just, it, it didn't land for me. Yeah, I, I agree. And maybe partially for me is because I haven't seen those movies, but it just, yeah, I agree. It seemed like there's no real point. You know, he could have had some like finding himself moment without having it all be suddenly in Japan with like it just takes you away from it i think for what they did it it worked within its confines of its story but it definitely was weaker because you take a character and you pull him away from other characters that we enjoy and that's that's the struggle with an ensemble show is that we like to see these characters interact and to me the show is at its best like some of my favorite moments are between johnny and daniel when they're Mm -hmm. like oh, we're actually bonding, even if we're, like, trying to be, like, manly against each other. Like, mm-hmm. the first season when they're, like, dri- doing the test drive at the end of the season, and yep. they start jamming they start together singing. Ariel yep. Speedwagon. Yep. Like, stuff like that, or, like, the at the end of the second season. The restaurant at- scene. Exactly. Yeah. Those are some yes. of the best scenes of this show, and to take him away from all the other established characters, that's where that weakness came in. Yeah, and the rest of the scene when they're both like, well, why didn't she write it down? They gotta write it down. <laughs> <laughs> And then with Allie at the end of season three, where Allie's like, all right, this is your guys' <laughs> problem. What are you doing? <laughs> he says something, you disagree with it, and you just keep going. Yeah. Like, you both have your own side of the story, and then there's the truth. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I don't like when shows like this uh, rely too much on, on showing clips from the original. But one point where it would be annoying, but I think it's a character thing, is when they show all the different clips of, of Mr. Miyagi. Because it's shown pretty early on that that's kind of a almost a flaw of Daniel that he just idolizes Mr. Miyagi so much and he doesn't really allow himself to be his own person where he, everything he does, he's always, Oh, Mr. Miyagi did this. Mr. Miyagi did that. Whereas, I mean, Johnny, even before Kreese came back, he never really talked that much about Kreese. When he let Kreese come back, it wasn't because he reached out to him. It's because Kreese just showed up. And I think Johnny's more willing to be his own person. Whereas I think throughout the whole series, Daniel's still trying to, be the next Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> that kind of comes out on his his training as well too. Like you know, uh, all their all their like the balance stuff and the the wax on wax off. You know, I mean, like it's uh, not just nostalgic of the the movie. It's like literally the exact same thing. I think that what they're going for is strong in terms of theming because the whole theme of the entire show is all about the influences you have and like leadership corrupting those that the leader is doing. Like both of the, um, the dojos are reflective of the leader. And so when Johnny's in charge of Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai is flawed but for the most part is trying to do the right thing. You know, it's rough around the edges and there, there's definitely a lot of mistakes that happen, 
but it's trying to to be better than the previous. And Miyagi Do is very similar to Daniel's personality, where it just looks at what Cobra Kai does and then accelerates it and amplifies it, and um, or I'm sorry, a- a- uh, antagonizes it. Yeah. And then when Kreese takes over Cobra Kai, that's when it turns into the only the strong survive and that sort. And so it's very intentional and almost heavy handed in the fact of like what you lead you reproduce and whether you mean to or not that's what you reproduce in the world yeah and so uh if there was a tv guys podcast bingo card it would probably have uh brian find some way to relate this current topic to the muppets but follow me on this oh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah paul just rolled you've, his eyes you've already lost both of us <laughs> i just want you to know that no it's it's, it's like that because i was listening to an interview earlier today with eric jacobson who is uh one of the core muppet performers who he's he's actually taken on most of the characters that were originally performed by frank oz and he was talking about like uh performing miss piggy and he's saying that on the summit you have to respect the legacy of the character because she's been a character that's been around for you know 45 years but at the same time she he can't be frank eyes so he has to try to respect the character but still do it in his own way instead of just trying to mimic frank oz all the time where it's kind of the same thing with this where daniel should be like yeah he can have influence and recognize the influence that mr miyagi had on his training but still have his own spin in it and make it his version of it yeah now here's the thing i kind of half expected a power rangers reference today because i mean that's kind of a natural correlation yeah, <laughs> with with Cobra Kai, I did not see the Muppets coming. I I, I maybe should have. I didn't plan I didn't, it. I didn't see that coming. And that's how Brian does it. Is when you're focused on the Power Rangers, then <laughs> boom, right from the other side, you get flanked by the Muppets. Yeah, and I just happened to be listening to the interview earlier today. I could easily talk about Power Rangers, but I don't think. <laughs> It's not necessary. <laughs> One of the final things I want to say before we kind of talk about um, what the next season's going to look like or what we want it to look like is that I, I again, realized this after rewatching it. I don't know why I didn't think of it like during it of the fact that like I wouldn't specifically watch a show because it's like a teen show. There's a lot of these shows out there like we follow teens and it's like, okay, that's, that's fine. And some good, some good shows like stranger things follow mainly teens, but like there's kind of a stigma in my mind, at least of like, if a show is focused around a teen cast, I'm like, is it going to be as good or is it going to be like melodramatic sort of thing? But this one is a teen show. It really is. Even though it follows like the two main guys, it's got such a heavy cast of teens that I was like, oh my gosh, I'm watching a teen show. They tricked me. They got me I, with the promises of Karate Kid. So it's the best teen show I would say I've ever seen. Well, it's, even Johnny and Daniel are basically teens because they're re- reviving their teen rivalry. It's like the episode of How I Met Your Mother, she didn't see coming, where it's like you meet that person from your past and all of a sudden like your flashback into how you were in that stage of life when you were with them. I mean, like that episode where they bring Allie in and Johnny and Allie go to like the Putin stuff and they have their date there. Yeah. It's like, and they even say, it's like, I feel like I'm a teenager again. We better not talk about How I Met Your Mother. We're going to start fighting. <laughs> we go there. Ted sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so judgmental so judgmental yeah we got a ted supporter we actually got a ted supporter on our podcast that's true he has shirts and everything i'm a ted sympathizer <laughs> i i wouldn't go as far to say supporter i just think you guys are a little harsh <laughs> <laughs> well ted is a little harsh of a human being so all right season four i don't know when the, i was looking it up and i didn't get to this spot i don't know when the release date is but i'm thinking um it is going to be this year i think i had heard 2021 is when they're doing i think it's later in the year i think it might be like november if i heard right so what do you think guys what does season four look like or what do you want to see out of season four so when we left off i'm just trying to remember because it's been a few months since i've actually seen the show um, it was Daniel and Johnny essentially working together and training students together, right? Yep, yep. And it really, the only ones, who, only major characters who were left with Cobra Kai and Kreese were Robbie and Tori. And Kyler, if you want to call him a major character. Oh, I think he probably will, just because they need more characters in there. But like, yep. you know, Co- uh, Miyagi Do has Sam and Miguel and Hawk and Dimitri and like all those other ancillary guys who kind of were a part of Cobra Kai. They're all now part of the. Is it still called Miyagi Do, or do they call it the Eagle, 
Eagle Miyagi. They haven't established that. They both were Eagle Fang and Miyagi Do. And then the last thing that we see is with uh, them playing it call in the air tonight as those two have their uh, practice mm-hmm. together at Miyagi, Miyagi Do. Yeah. So I, I will say this every time Johnny and Daniel get together, it, it, it's going great. And then something disastrous happens. So we're absolutely bound for some sort of conflict or disagreement between them. That's going to, you know, drive them apart. But uh, to be completely honest and, and, you know, it's kind of funny. We referenced this, like, I feel like we are potentially on the verge of a shark jump. I think it could happen. And I think, I think uh, if they, like you said, if they spend too much time with Johnny and Daniel getting along, I think that would be a shark jump. Cause like, those guys are, like I said, are always at conflict and that drives a lot of the story. And I think maybe a couple episodes, they could be getting along. I don't think they ever have to be complete mortal enemies, but I think they have to have conflict between them as long as the show's on. Well, I think what's going to happen is there's this focus on like the, the yin yang sort of classic Asian uh, symbol where you've got one and the other that are just polar opposites, but yet they like live in harmony. And I think that's really what the focus is going to be with these two dojos of how they know what their common enemy is. And so they have that common enemy increase. And so that's what everything's going to be leading towards is the conflict with Cobra Kai at the all Valley tournament. Um, and then maybe off the mat stuff with crease too. And so the there's needing to be, how do we work together? And it's probably going to be like the first episode is going to be all the ways that they don't work. And it's going to take four or five episodes for them to really finally find that footing to come together and be like, oh, okay, this is how we coexist. Mm -hmm. And then we can be able to to beat Crease. So that's going to be that big focus. Uh, Brian and I just watched before uh, we started talking the trailer that has um, Terry Silver in it. So uh, uh, Paul, were you a big Karate Kid fan or do you remember the movies that much? I mean, I've I watched them, um, but I'm not necessarily. Uh, I've maybe seen them twice. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> Brian hasn't watched any of them, and I think I've seen Karate Kid one, and then the Jaden Smith one. Which, by the way, yes. speaking of which, Will Smith is an executive producer of this. If you guys didn't know that, so hmm. the rich are getting richer, um, and that's probably because he. I'm sure it's because he got the rights when they did the Jaden Smith version. And that's probably why he's on as executive producer. Um, but the they hinted at it at the end of last season where Chris makes this phone call. And then you see in the flashback, Terry Silver in the cage where he's like, if you need anything the rest of your life, I'm here for you. I'm in. Uh, we've actually seen Terry Silver in um, Karate Kid. Uh, which one was it? Karate Kid. I've got it pulled up here. Part three. And um, so we have seen this character before. And so <clears throat> he's going to join Crease as a big bad, which makes sense to have Silver and Crease together to fight mm. um, Johnny and, and LaRusso. And so I think we're going to see an adult fight as well as the All Valley. We're going to see those two versus the other two. Which we, see, we saw a preview of. We saw the, the Johnny and, and Daniel and Crease fight at the end of the season before, they, before Johnny and Daniel got together. Yeah. I think they would want to do like, <laughs> I think in, th- in this third th- season, they're like, we really would love it if we could somehow do crease fighting off both of them at the same time. But because of how old he is, they're like even that we can't do. So they had to have each one fight one at a time. Yeah. I think they're going to have to do something, you know, kind of shocking to, to keep the interest. Like, I mean, when Miguel goes over the railing and uh, is paralyzed for a time, like that's, like one of those catch your breath moments, the the cliffhanger type thing. I almost think they're going to have to kill somebody off in this season. I actually said that at the end of this episode or season two, I was saying that to Angie. I'm like, mm-hmm. someone's going to die. And she's, and she's like, it's not that kind of show, Matt. And then Miguel hits the railing and they're like, he, they could have, they killed him. And she's like, no, he's not dead. Mm-hmm. I also heard rumblings that they made, I guess, I don't know if that's true or if there's people predicting, but that characters, some characters who were gone for season three might come back, like Stingray and Aisha, who were both missing for season three. I could see either of them coming back potentially. I think Aisha is. I think I did hear the same thing. I hadn't heard about Stingray, but I would. I am a hundred percent in for more Stingray action. Yeah. Oh, this is kind of out of place because this isn't about next season. But 
one of the main things that I, I just it just takes me out of is a character in Cobra Kai that doesn't need to exist, and that's Daniel's son, whatever his name is. Is it Anthony? Anthony? Yeah. yeah. Why? Why have a son? You don't do anything with him. He he he's so annoying too. He's he's the Morgan Matthews of Cobra Kai. Unnecessary. <laughs> If you're going to have a character, make him interesting or don't have him at all. Don't you feel like they're kind of setting that up to eventually bring him in? They Maybe. brought him back towards the end of season three for a scene where it's like, hey, remember, you have a kid, just so you know. <laughs> there was that one scene when when Dan, when Dan he was first starting to revitalize Miyagi-Do. He went over and said, hey, you want to you wanna get back into karate? He's like, no, hard pass. I'm going to play video games. Like... <laughs> Yeah, I honestly, I honestly feel like actually Sam is probably one of my least favorite characters. She just doesn't have a huge personality. True. She's a she is a bit of a Mary Sue. I someone also said that they didn't like Amanda, and I'm like, I actually like Amanda. I think that she's well written because she is like a foot in reality. But a lot of shows where they have a, a wife that's a foot in reality versus everything that's going on, they tend to be a nag. And she's not a nag. She's able to be supportive of Daniel, but also not like a doormat. She calls him out on his crap and mm-hmm. holds him accountable, but also is like, by the way, I also know how important this is for you. And I'm, you know. Yeah, the only time she's really doing any kind of what you, what you could call nagging is when they're doing things that are completely stupid. We're like, oh, wait, you guys went to a prison and harassed people? that's that's great like yeah and you need to call him out like i don't feel like it's like the you know like um on breaking bad oh what's her name skylar i like skylar's like oh my gosh i'm i've had enough of you where her i'm just like with amanda i'm like yeah you're right he he is stupid that was a stupid thing to do Mm -hmm. well that's that was it (laughs) all right i think that is a lot i felt like we talk about a lot of stuff so if you haven't watched cobra kai you have now gotten it pretty much ruined for you that's you know sorry it's, it's still entertaining it is you know it's going though so you feel, you feel like 80s nostalgia and and teenagers kicking the crap out of each other and watch cobra kai that's true is there an end season like are, are they done after four or i thought i heard someone say they they got picked up for season five but i don't know for sure yeah, I haven't heard anything either. Um, I think it is one of those shows that like, gosh, there's a video that says Cobra Kai season five and season six, big news. I Oh, they did announce a season five for sure. Okay. This is around the same time that, that lot, the Lost creators went to the producers and said, we can't keep it open-ended. We have to plan an ending or we'll jump the shark. So I think that... Um, Cobra Kai. I, I think it would, be, it would be smart for them to do if they're going to do a, a season five or plan or like just plan out the end date, then they can like plan out the major plots yeah. without you know running out of ideas. Yep, it's we're getting to that point. I I mean I love the show, and so far the writers mm-hmm. haven't really given me any reason to doubt them. But uh, apart from maybe uh, Daniel's trip to Japan, but even then that was that was fine. It just wasn't the strongest. Yeah. Um. So. I'm looking forward to more Cobra Kai probably by the end of this year, but we need to jump into trivia and then we'll say so long to our good buddy, Paul. So last week's trivia, Brian, what was it? Last week we talked about the show last man standing. And the question was how many characters or actors from home improvement made guest appearances on last man standing. And by my count, it's five. We had Patricia Richardson who played Jill, uh, Zachary Ty Bride who played the oldest son, Brad, Jonathan Taylor Thomas who played the middle son, Randy, Richard Karn, who played Al, and Tim Allen, who might not count, but I count because even though he is the star of Last Man Standing, he also made a guest appearance as Tim Taylor, his home improvement character. Trick question in your so, face. I would say five. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but uh, just don't call me out on it because no one likes to be called out on when they're wrong on trivia. Yeah, no one likes that. <laughs> and that never happens either, so... So, Paul, what's your trivia question that no one's going to call you out on if you're wrong? On well, uh, I'm I'm 100 percent confident that I I know the answer to this one. So, um, here it is. Uh, this is going to be a, a trivia question in reference not only to the show Cobra Kai but also back to the original movie. So, mm-hmm. here it is. What recycled location from the original Karate Kid movie? Did Miguel and Sam visit on their very first date? 
I think I said the answer earlier in this episode. <laughs> did you? I, I, don't, I, I did. didn't hear it if you did. So we'll see how well people were paying attention then. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Of course, now that you said that, people can just go like hit the slide bar and go back and listen. Earlier. I mean, also, people can always Google the answers to these two. <laughs> so it's like, if you know it, you know it. If you don't know it, feel free to look it up. No one's looking over your shoulder. But what if our, what if our listeners are like Johnny Lawrence and they don't know how to use Google? then get a Miguel who will help you out. <laughs> so I think we should also talk about the exciting conclusion to guest month. Bum, bum, bum. All right. Hey, so as uh, Paul said earlier today, he is an American and Americans love the office. Even Europeans love the office, but they have their own version that sucks. So uh, <laughs> we are talking about the office next week, but we're doing something cool. We're doing a round table with all three of our guests from this month. So we're going to have five of us on the podcast next week. And we're going to list all of the characters from the office. Maybe not every single one, yeah. but a lot of them. We got 35, 36, 36, <laughs> also known as 35 <laughs> in some cultures. So we got 36, uh, of the characters that you know and love and we're going to rank them from worst to best and uh we're going to go around and we're going to have each person do a pick kind of like a fantasy football type draft of like the worst team you can get and so we're going to pick starting at the bottom we're going to go all the way up to what's our consensus number one character and why is it robert california yep and of course along the way i'm sure there'll be some people who will disagree oh why did you put this character so low and that's what's the, where the fun's going to come in so yep. you get matt and brian of course you get paul you get mike and you get andrew all five of us next week that's true and that is how you end special guest month boom fantastic <laughs> <laughs> thanks paul we we needed paul's approval to be able to move on with the show so that's yeah. why we paused for dramatic effect well hey thank you again not only for being on the show but also for being a faithful listener since day one and for being supportive of us we do appreciate you that's yep. why we constantly give you shout outs and as schmidt most said, mostly faithful unless you're talking about something boring and as schmidt <laughs> says what sort of name is paul 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 what kind of a name is that Skip the New Girl episode. I figured as much. So did Mike. Oh, man. New Girl is so good. <laughs> All right. Well, fine. So we're going to have way. two New Girl haters next week. Two New Girl haters. You can't hate New Girls. You can hate old girls. I don't girls. hate it. It's just, it's just mediocre. Oh, that's those are fighting words. All right. Well, we <laughs> Paul might not be back next week. But I know I will be because I'm Matt. I'm Brian. And I'm Paul. And we're reminding you to stay tuned and keep watching. Ha! Oh, and he's, he's having dinner at Miguel's house. And they're like, I like these bananas. So they're called plantains. Oh, well, in America, they're called bananas. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh.